coming up on Cardinals Insider. Let's do it. Spend the day with rookie Juan Yepes. Also coming up, a Missouri native's dream comes true with a big league debut at Bush Stadium. Welcome to the big leagues, James Nail. A scoreless inning in his debut. Then later, what a season it has been. Relive the top moments of the first half. Those stories and more ahead on Cardinals Insider. Welcome to Cardinals Insider, I'm Ozzie Smith. Rookie Juan Yepes is a part of a wave of young players making an impact for St. Louis. We mic'd up Juan for a day at Wrigley Field earlier this season. Hey guys, good morning. Uh, we're in Chicago and we're about to play a double header and I'm gonna show you what my day looks like. Kinda early, 12. 12 o'clock game and then six. The grind starts now, you know, the winning starts now. So typically we go to the field uh, through buses. Um, us, the young guys, have to take the first one. But what they know is that we want to get there early to work, you know? Good morning. Good morning. We're here. Good morning, how you doing? We, we do our cardio here every day. Warm up, this there. You forget something when you, when you go to the field, you're, you're done. Morning. Yep. So now we just go to the cage, get ready for the game. Um, good morning, how you doing? Pretty much it. What's up, brother? What's up, brother? Dang, T. Yeah. Are you ready? Yep. Yeah. Competition? <laughs> you gonna hit or are you gonna be able yeah, to go all day? Yeah, I'm waiting. Oh, you want me to go first? No, I would like to go first, but if you want, go ahead. <laughs> so the point of the game, we're trying to hit that clear spot right there in five swings. Overall, he's winning. But not today, not today. Oof. Oh, baby, that's good. Oh. Oof. all over right. Nope. Man on third, two out. Hey, 6-3. You see, I figure out the spot and now I beat you all the time. I'm just saying that you love the camera, bro. Stop. Coming from you, that's <laughs> the richest thing I've ever heard. Bro, they told me you love the camera. What? They told me that you love the camera. That you want to be in this. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> No, bro. Alright, time to focus. Time to focus. No! My only friend, bro. You wanna throw now? You wanna throw now? I'm not his friend. I'm not his friend. <laughs> oh, chest, 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 chest. ¿Qué pasó? Hola. ¿Cómo están? Chévere. ¿Qué más? Bien. ¿Qué pasó? Paulito, todo bien? Let's do it, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. Alright, well, I have a game to play now, so thank you very much, I appreciate it. 
James Neal grew up a Cardinal fan in Southeast Missouri. And after seven seasons in Oakland system, he signed with the Cardinals as a minor league free agent this past November. On June 27th, his dreams came true when he debuted at Bush Stadium. Here's more on his story and this week's player profile. It's my first major league camp and um, you know for it to be with the Cardinals is, is special and uh, you know I grew up watching Wayne Wright and Yachty and uh, some of those former Cardinal players so to be in the same you know environment that they are you know I'm, I'm just sucking it all in. I actually grew up in a town just south of Cape called Charleston, a uh, smaller town um, about 5,000 people everybody knows everybody and uh, so yeah big big time Cardinal Nation down there, um, you know, whole family's Cardinal fans, so it's been cool. In the past I haven't really been a true strikeout pitcher, so I know that my game is to get ahead of people, get ground balls, you know, eat innings, that sort of thing, and that's something that I've, you know, done pretty well at, and uh, part of that is just attacking hitters and, and being aggressive. The last two years I think that just mentally I feel like I'm ready for that challenge. Um, you know, in other years I think that I was on hot streaks and maybe I was uh, pitching well and I thought oh maybe I got a chance but you know in the last year or two I definitely have felt like I got what it takes. Ground ball left side can they get two out there welcome to the big leagues James Nail. This year I'm just trying to you know go out and stay within myself and prove that I'm consistent and uh, hopefully get a chance. A Cardinal fan and now the birds on the bat and a night he'll never forget. After the break Adam Wainwright is swinging for impact. Uh, it's just a really cool thing that's grown into a, something that I, I mean, you know, might be my legacy more than playing um, Big League Impact one day. Who knows? Then later in the show, Albert Pujols gets a first class send off in his final visit to Fenway Park. See it in just a bit. Adam Wainwright's big league impact has been caring for those in need at home and abroad since 2013. They put on a unique fundraisers to support their charity efforts. This year, that included an event called Swing for Impact at Top Golf. Well, tonight we're raising funds for Big League Impact's mission of just helping the, the most vulnerable among us with food, water, medical supplies, educational supplies and shelter by bringing out some of former and current Cardinals players. They're joining Adam Wayne right here at Top Golf tonight to engage fans, play some golf, have fun and raise a lot of money for charity. They wanted to support me, but really what they wanted to do was support the great initiatives that we have. They know their presence here makes a lot of difference and, and helps bring a, a cool experience to the people that, that gave their money. You see him in some of the most crucial moments in his career, winning the World Series, and you see the, the just the fire that he exhibits on the mound. He's equally passionate about caring for people in the community. Big League Impact is definitely a, a ministry, a, a work of, of the heart for Adam and his and Jenny and his family. Well, that's the goal, you know, is uh, whoever's going to be the head of this needs to be an active player. I really believe that. So whenever I retire, I'll pass the baton to somebody else. And Cal Gibson from the Phillies is doing a great job and a lot of great things over in Philly with us. And he's our he's our vice president. We got a couple of guys, Tommy Edmond, a few other guys that are always on board with everything we do here too. So uh, it's just a really cool thing that's grown into a, something that I I mean, you know, might be my legacy more than playing. Um, Big League Impact one day, who knows? It's important for people to know that we're raising money for charity through events that allow fans to engage the players, but the players are giving of their own as well. So this isn't just about raising money um, through events, but it's a combination of us supporting things that they already have passion for and they've already been supporting many of them throughout their entire career. So it means so much to us that fans are willing to come out open their hearts and their wallets um, for our mission and for the causes that are near and dear to Big League Impact and all the players that are involved. Still ahead, see how the old American League Browns integrated St. Louis baseball in 1947. All these firsts in the annals of baseball history that are really based out of St. Louis because St. Louis was the first team to have two African Americans. That's coming up.
Lou Brock is one of Cardinal baseball's most important figures. He's one of the greatest postseason performers of all time, and he revolutionized the art of base stealing. And he did it with class. Here's more on Lou in this week's Cardinals Legend Profile. It's time for a Cardinals Legends Profile. He demonstrated both power and speed throughout his 19-year career. Lewis Clark Brock loved playing baseball from a young age, but didn't play an organized ball until the 11th grade. He enjoyed listening to Harry Carey call Cardinal games from his family's radio. Being able to uh, listen to the Cardinals as a kid growing up and then suddenly be part of it. So it's like being, reaching your destiny, a place that you want to go, and then suddenly you're there and you belong there. Brock began his baseball career with the Chicago Cubs. He was traded to the Cardinals in exchange for pitcher Ernie Brolio on June 15, 1964. Brock for Brolio became one of the greatest trades in Cardinals history. Brock was seen as a power hitter with Chicago, but when he got to St. Louis, he was told to focus on speed and average. He then transformed into one of the most prolific base stealers ever. During his three seasons in Chicago, Lou stole just 50 bases. Between the trade and the end of the 65 season, he stole 96 bags. He's going! The pitch is high! The throw is safe! He stole it! The throw got by the shortstop and Brock has done it! And listen to this, folks! Brock has now stolen 893! Brock lifted the Cardinals from 8th to 1st in 1964 and went on to help beat the New York Yankees in the World Series. It was the first of three pennants and two World Series titles in the Brock era. Gathers them in. The Cardinals are the new world champion. This is one day St. Louis will never forget. To this day, Brock is second among MLB's all-time stolen base leaders, with 938 stolen bases. He headed to Cooperstown in 1985 and was inducted into the Cardinals Hall of Fame in 2014. Lou became an ambassador for the Cardinals. His smile was known to light up the clubhouse during his playing days and kept doing so when he'd visit as an alum. Lou Brock passed away in 2020, but will forever be remembered as a Cardinals legend. For more Cardinals history, visit the Cardinals Hall of Fame and Museum inside Ballpark Village. Plan your visit at cardinals.com museum. Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier in April of 1947. On July 5th, Cleveland's Larry Doby became the first black American leaguer. And later that month, Integration came to St. Louis when Hank Thompson and Willard Brown suited up for the St. Louis Browns. Here's their story. 75th anniversary of Jackie Robinson crossing the, the color line in Major League Baseball when he did it on April 15th. And it was also June 5th when uh, Bill Veck brought Larry Doby in to be the first American League player. The third and fourth men to break the color barrier in Major League Baseball were St. Louis Browns. For us in St. Louis, it's a memory we should not forget. Hank Thompson, Willard Brown. Hank Thompson, on July 17th, took the field. It was a moment that, that is lost in, in baseball because these two men, on July 20th, took the field together. And they, for the first time, were two African Americans of the nine on the field. And we don't want to lose that. And when they took the field, it seemed for the next several weeks across baseball, they set records. You know, the first time an African-American plays in Yankee Stadium in Boston's Fenway Park. The first African-American to hit a home run was Willard Brown off Hall of Famer Hal Newhauser. All these firsts in the annals of baseball history that are really based out of St. Louis because St. Louis was the first team to have two African-Americans. Still to come, look back on some of the best moments of the first half. You won't want to miss it, so don't go anywhere. Alec Burleson has been hitting the cover off the ball down in Memphis. The 2020 second rounder on the 343 average as of late June. Let's get to know him a little bit better in this week's Farm Report. Pro ball is an adjustment for sure, especially coming from college and a lot of things are on your own. And for me personally, I think it's taking care of my business and, you know, taking care of my routines, you know, coming from college where it was kind of, you know, set, set out for you and it was structured very well. You know, 
being able to do that on my own and, and you know, one year of pro ball, I think. Obviously, I haven't mastered it yet, but I feel very comfortable with where I'm at right now. Swung on, fly ball, center field and deep. Swaggerty going back, may get there. No, up against the wall, he leaps, it's gone. This could be a four-bagger for Burleson. He's around second, he's around third. The throw-in is cut off. It's an inside the park home run. My goal every day I go out there is just to, you know, give 100%, play the game the right way, uh, play it hard, and, you know, that's just what, what I'm going to do. That's the way I've always played the game, you know, growing up, and I think, you know, that has carried into, you know, last season, that having a good season, I think that's part of the reason why I did have that. You know, I showed up to the park every day and was ready to go, and that's me. I'm going to give you, I may, I may not, you know, have the results that some of the fans may want me to have, but I'm going to give, it's, it's not going to be a lack of effort type thing. This game's hard enough as it is, and you know, to be able to be surrounded by, you know, guys that you're excited to come to the field every day and be around, I think that's, that's what makes the game special, and it's a tough game, but when you have guys that have your back like, like some of these guys do, it just makes it, makes it a lot more enjoyable. Albert Pujols is one of the greatest players in baseball history. And likewise, Boston's Fenway Park knows something about being iconic. So when Albert made his final visit to Boston, the Red Sox went out of their way to honor his legacy. When we return, I'm answering one of your questions. It's Ask Ozzy, and it's up next. It's time for this week's Ask Ozzy. Alexa in Davenport, Iowa asks, What's your favorite memory of Bob Gibson? Bullet Bob Gibson, of course, for me, you know, having the opportunity to meet Bob for the first time, and uh, it's such an intimidating thing. Uh, and I think people would, would say that as a player, you know, how do you become intimidated? Well, when you have a figure such as Bob Gibson, whose reputation precedes him, you know, getting the opportunity to meet him in person was, was an honor and a pleasure. And uh, Bob and I became very good friends. And, it got to a point to where we became such good friends that he told me one day, he said, you know what, Ozzy, if I played shortstop, people wouldn't even know who you are. The fact of the matter is, he was such a good athlete that that probably would be true. <laughs> it, it's always great being able to spend time with Bob, and, you know, we, we always went back and forth and, and stuff, and it was a great, great relationship. Thanks for the question, Alexa. If you want to submit a question, head on over to cardinals.com slash insider and click the Ask Ozzy tab. But for now, stay with us. There's more Cardinals Insider after the break. There have been some great storylines this summer. Rookies and veterans alike are making an impact on 2022. 
Let's review some of the best moments from the first half in this week's Redbird Reels. In the air, it is gone! Welcome back, Albert! It's like you never left! The throw into Sosa, the tag, he's out! He's done it again! The man is ridiculous! He's flat out ridiculous! MVP! So Nolan Arenado has a cycle. Foul territory and, oh, he caught it! Tommy Edmond! On the line and it's caught! Caught by Tommy Edmond! Diving catch! Brendan Donovan, swing and a miss, blew it by him. Did he get another? Gone! Nolan Gorman, have a day. Goldsmith hits it out to left and this will do it. And he does it in grand style. A walk off grand slam. Edmund with a drive out to deep right. It is gone! It's a walk off. We're down to their final out. Yippee, guys, yippee! Para historia, cuadrangular de tres carreras. Arenado, Gorman, Yepes, and now Dylan. Four consecutive home runs for St. Louis. That's all for this episode. Join us again right here next week. And as always, you can watch new episodes on YouTube or at cardinals.com insider. For everyone involved with the show, I'm Ozzie Smith, and we'll see you next time.